to our YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step on mapping a client with very uneven eyebrows. It's such a common problem that we face every day in permanent makeup. Don't be scared to tackle it. My biggest tip would be to balance as much as you possibly can, but just don't completely remove an eyebrow to make them identical. Remember the whole sisters, not twins in this case, 100%. So if you like our videos, remember to hit subscribe and give us a little thumbs up. Keep your eyes peeled because we have some amazing new tutorials coming soon. Okay, so just before I put my height lines in, what I'm looking at is the height that the brow is naturally sitting. So you can see that Kelly's left brow is sitting quite a bit higher than her right brow. If you just close your eyes for me a second. When Kelly closes, you can see that the brows actually even up, which now tells me actually it's not the brow positioning, it's muscle, it's her muscles. So open again, and as she opens, you see the left side rising. So this is her stronger muscle. She obviously talks a lot with it, um, and it's pulling the brow up. So I'm just gonna factor that in when I'm doing my height lines. Um, I would never completely remove a natural brow to get perfect symmetry. So what I'm gonna do is maybe try and flatten the top of the left brow and add a bit of lift to the right brow to try and create as much balance as we possibly can. Raise your eyebrows for me as much as you can and then frown and then relax. And it just helps to put the brows back into a resting position. And I'm gonna pop my height lines in. So bottom of the bulb, this little brow keeps popping up. Top of the bowl, it's got a wonder of its own bowl, I say. And then we're gonna to do top of the arch. So I'm gonna be cautious not to really add much more to the top of this side, but I wanna try and lift a little bit on her other side. So you can see the gap that's there to this side. So you can see how much higher that side is sitting when her eyes are open. So this is the reason that I always map with eyes open and clients sitting up because if she was laying down with her eyes closed, these brows would be perfectly symmetrical. Close again, you see how much it drops, but the minute she opens her eyes and it shoots up, this is what your client is gonna see at the end of the treatment. So you need to really bear that in mind, otherwise you'll always have one that looks much higher than the other. So I'm gonna get Kelly to lay down now, and then we're gonna finish the mapping process. Okay, so I've laid Kelly down. You can see now how um, how much lower this side looks with my with my mapping height lines but I would never lift the brow by that amount because it would mean taking out near enough all of the underneath of her brow which I don't want to do so when I'm mapping next thing that I do is get my center line in I'm looking at the center line on the bridge of the nose um, so ignore the bottom of the nose and we literally just want to you can kind of feel it there's like a little dip there just pop a centre line in and then with your thread you can then lift that up. Get my centre line. You can then go corner of the nose, corner of the outer eye, just to get your end points. And then I like to just come in front of my client and I'm just gonna follow from the um, crease on the nostril up over the eye to get my starting points. And then what I'll do with my calipers is I will just um, double check that from my center line. So I just wanna uh, just check that that is the same distance before I put them in. Now to find your arch, there is a general rule which is 4.5 centimetres from the centre line. However, it is, it's, it's a guide. Um, if it doesn't look right, then don't do it. So I pull it in and then I'll have a look and see if I want to tweak. I also use the bone structure um, to find my arch. So if you feel your skull, you'll feel that there's actually a corner on it. And that's where the brow should arch just before so that the tail follows the brow bone round. So I use both and then I will um, 
kind of see where it's sitting best for her face. So just from my centre line, four and a half centimetres, I'll just pop a little, little guide in. And you can see that Kelly's brow here is naturally arching just slightly over from that. So I will always go more with the natural brow and the bone structure as opposed to the measurement. The measurement is always just a guide. So then what I do is I use my pencil just to feel for the corner on the skull and draw that line down. Just turn that a little bit for me. So just hold your pencil at the end really, really loosely. You're not drawing as such, you just want it to catch. So I just drag it down and let it catch on that top height line. And where it catches is normally where the natural arch should go. go that way again for me. So you can see here, it's just very slightly over from my mark, so literally only by a couple of mil. So, I'm just going to put my front lines in from the marks that we've done. And then I like my calipers again just to double check. So now I'm going to measure from the front of the bowl to that arch point. And check that it's the same on the other side, which it is. And then I want to check from my bowl to the end of my towel make sure that they're all in the same. Um, so I like to just get these points in first because it makes the rest of the process much quicker and easier rather than drawing the whole brow in and then having to correct too much. So back to my thread and I'm going to join the top of the bulb corner to the top of the arch but as I said earlier that I'm going to just lower that slightly because I don't want to take too much of Kelly's natural brow off. So I've just took my line just below the height line. I know that this side is lower but we also need to be aware to work with the natural brow and then I'm going to make sure that I don't add any more. Now you can go from the centre line through that arch point down to the end point and this will help you to keep the angles of your towels even. So again, centre point through that arch point straight down. So I've now mapped in the top and the towels of my bra. You can use your thread to map underneath or you can freehand. Um, I prefer to freehand the underneath in, just sometimes I feel that the thread dips a little bit here and then I have to correct it anyway. Um, so I tend to freehand that bit. So I'm just with my pencil, I'm just going to draw over these bits. I always knock this top corner off. I never keep my brows completely square. Just a preference thing. Um, everybody's got their own way of doing it. I just, I always aim for a more of a natural, softer finish. Okay, that way for me. So now I'm going to just trace over these um, red lines. I might actually even lower that just a little bit more. Just for me, it's too much of a gap. She's got a nice natural brow. It's just the muscle that pulls that up too high on the other side. When you um, are mapping the brows as well, always stretch this way. You don't want to be stretching up because you'll round the brow too much. So always stretch side to side. So from this bottom height line is my starting point. Let's see how much I can get away with lifting this side up. And this is such a common, such a common problem. So don't be scared to kind of tackle it. You just don't want to push it too much. Otherwise, if your client doesn't keep up with maintenance, She's going to end up with two brows, which is what we want to avoid. So I'm kind of 
kind of going right along the, just slightly above where her natural brow is. I'm just going to get happy with this side before I move on to the other, because the other one's not going to need too much mapping. You want to create lift, so I'm just going to dip that front slightly. And I just still feel there's too much empty skin here. I'm going to bring it in a little bit. Okay, so before I do the other side, I'm just going to grab a cotton bud and some water and just clean that up so that we've got something bit more sharp to match up to. Okay, so because Kelly's got um, just some hair under this, it throws my shape out a little bit. So what I do is I just get a white pencil and just draw over her natural brow that I want to kind of just take out a bit to give her that lift and it just helps me to see my shape a bit better. Okay, so same on the other side. I'm just going to go over these lines. So being cautious as well to keep this side uh, flatter because I know as soon as she opens her eyes it's going to shoot up. I'm just going to freehand the bottom of this side in. I mean, her natural brow here is very good, so it just needs strengthening underneath more than anywhere. they're both coming along together and then what I'll do is I'll get Kelly to sit up so that I can double check these so come back this way for me a second I just need to round this bit off a little bit more get Kelly to sit up now and we'll double check this. Okay, so I've just sucked Kelly up. I just like to always double check um, how the brows are sitting once the pipe is sitting up and eyes open. Um, so I'm going to give her the mirror, get her to double check for me. I really encourage my clients to be fussy at this point as well. Um, so if there's any little tweaks that they want to make, it's much easier to do it now rather than once um, it's tattooed. So have a look, Kelly, and tell me what what you see. Um, they are going to look a little bit bigger and bolder at the minute. Obviously, we've got a big outline around them, which won't be there for the ones that's tattooed them. Where I put the white pencil is where you've just got a little bit of hair. Um, so, especially on this side, I just want to lift this side a little bit. So, it's not a lot of hair, but just a, a couple. You have to keep up with your hair removal if we do place the brow there. Um, otherwise, it's going to make that side look thicker. Yeah. Are you happy with them? Anything you would change? You sure? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay so I'm going to lay Kelly down and we'll get ready to start tattooing. Okay, 
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's helped with balancing those brows. This mapping video is actually part of an ombre webinar that we filmed and you can grab full access to the step-by-step -step ombre webinar over on the PMU Circle and on our e-learning platform. Links are below and if you have any questions please feel free to pop a comment below and I will make sure that I do answer all of them. So we'll see you again soon.